two points have in common forms a heuristic space. It's the space of science and technology and society and political life, where two things are approximately equal. Equal for certain purposes, like the interchangeable parts of a cell phone or workers in a factory. How two points differ forms an epistemic space. It is precise and rigorous that two points are not one. It's the space of reality in which we exist in difference from everything else. It's the space of fundamental dignity in which one thing cannot take the place of another. It's the space in which concepts, which cluster for specific purposes, cannot be formulated. And so in which the riddle of the world, itself a concept, does not arise. It's the space of salvation that religions have sought and that philosophy incontestably establishes. It is a timeless space. When Einstein began work on the theory of relativity, he asked himself not what is time, but how do we measure time? Through repetitive processes, a heartbeat, a pendulum, a rotating earth, a vibrating atom. But these repetitions are only approximately equal, equal with intolerances, heuristically, not exactly. Within the precisions of epistemic space, there are no true repetitions. There is no time. Time is an approximation to reality. The world, closely observed, is timeless as religious eternity. Philosophy created science and so can advance it. Steven Weinberg, the Nobel Prize winning physicist, said that at the highest level, physics becomes philosophy. Einstein asked the philosophical question, how can we really know we're moving? Heisenberg asked, what can we really know about electrons, about the vanishingly small? Relativity and quantum mechanics show the power of philosophy, of not presuming what cannot, in principle, be known. Philosophy must solve everything. Heartbreak, of course. What about cancer? Can philosophy guide molecular biology as it has guided physics to its greatest achievements? My first book, Considerations, dealt with the nature of objects.